beautiful weather as we head through the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine to go around, especially in central and eastern Kogoland with highs in the 70s and low 80s. But to the west and especially to the southwest later this evening, we do need to keep an eye on the skies for the chance of a couple of thunderstorms, a few of which could pack an extra punch. And unfortunately, more thunderstorms will be on the way overnight, spreading eastward. And that will set the stage for what we watch on Thursday. More on that and the rest of your forecast on the way. But until then, midday in Kogoland starts right now. Live from Killoland Media Group, midday in Killoland. Houston Speedway and Brandon is eager to get back on track. We'll look at how the cleanup process is going. And President Joe Biden announced he will offer pardons to veterans convicted of crimes regarding same-sex relationships. The details coming up. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. A Siston man has been sentenced in connection with a 30-year-old cold case. 58-year-old Jay Adams will spend a decade behind bars. Last November, Kelloland News reported that Adams pleaded guilty to a 1992 cold case. Back on the Lake Traverse Indian Reservation in September 1992, Adams slammed a child's head on a concrete floor. He then placed the victim back in her bed and went into another room. Adams did not seek medical attention for the victim who died of her injuries. In 2023, a witness to the crime came forward and identified Adams as being responsible for the child's death. One person was killed in a crash yesterday afternoon near Belfouche. The Department of Public Safety says the 69-year-old driving a Toyota Sienna was traveling east when the car entered the ditch, struck a driveway approach, and ended in an irrigation ditch. The driver died from injuries sustained in the crash. The South Dakota Highway Patrol is investigating. In weather, it looks like a pleasant Wednesday out there, but rain is on the way. Not a matter of if, but when, Adam. Yeah, unfortunately, we're back to square one, talking about the potential for rain in Kelloland. And also, unfortunately, some stronger thunderstorms to go along with that. We've had back-to-back -back days out west where we've seen severe weather. And we're going to see if we can make it three in a row, unfortunately. There's a view of Falls Park. They've been getting some debris out of the water. You can see some of the piles there just above the banner. 78 at the noon hour at the airport with a north wind at 7 miles per hour. Meanwhile, out to the west as we go out and take a look at Rapid City, they are also seeing a pretty nice day on their hands out there. A little bit cooler too, 71 with a light easterly breeze at 6 miles per hour. We're at 70 in. Custer as well as Sisseton. 77 Pier and Chamberlain. Aberdeen sitting at 73. 78 Yankton. 79 and Spencer. In fact, much of northwestern Iowa roughly around that 80 degree mark. Uh, 72 for Watertown and Marshall. But unless you're in Watertown where you're one single degree milder compared to yesterday, everybody is cooler. Not to mention more comfortable as well. Dew points have been taking a step backward as well. Where they were from 5 to 10 degrees cooler compared to yesterday afternoon in many locations. A little bit more up toward Aberdeen, Sisseton, and Ortonville, and then out to Rapid City as well. There's one more view for good measure. We'll head up north this time. Go to Mulbridge. 75 and north wind to 7 miles per hour, but a gorgeous crystal clear sky up in northern South Dakota. Uh, we'd love to be able to keep that in place, but while satellite and radar is quiet now, I don't think that's going to be the case as we head into Thursday and Thursday afternoon where we'll have cloud cover building in and also another opportunity for showers and some thunderstorms to go right along with it. In fact, uh, for this evening, we do have uh, that marginal risk level one in place out in southwestern portions of South Dakota, uh, hot springs over to Pine Ridge with wind and hail being the main concern. So we'll keep an eye on the southwestern corner of South Dakota. Otherwise, the farther east you go, now, you're going to be doing pretty well today. Either side of 80 for a high, roughly, for southeastern and northeastern Kelloland, for that matter, with a good amount of sunshine and a light northerly breeze. Out to the west, a little bit warmer in a couple of locations, low to mid-80s in several areas. But again, Rapid City Point south, we do have that chance for a couple of thunderstorms later in the day. We'll talk about that, Thursday's potential, and the rest of your seven-day forecast all coming up. All right, thank you, Adam. South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley is warning residents impacted by flooding to be careful about flood-related scams. These scams involve fraudulent home repairs and charity appeals. Jackley encourages the public to work with contractors and charities that they know 
and recommends people don't give into high pressured sales tactics. He also asks that people are cautious with contractors who solicit business door to door. And if you have questions about a business, charitable organization, call them to make sure they're legitimate. South Dakota Game Fish and Parks has announced the closure of Gavin's and Midway swimming beaches at Lewis and Clark Recreation Area. This comes after a routine test showed unhealthy levels of bacteria in the water. The district park supervisor said the heavy rains mixed with flooding has resulted in higher levels of contaminants in the water. Fishing is still safe in the areas and the main concern is swimming and ingesting the water. Houston Speedway in Brandon once again resembles a racetrack, only days after being submerged in flood water. Houston's plans to resume racing on July 7th. That gives staff less than two weeks to clean up everything from debris-filled fences to campers tipped on their side. General Manager Doug Johnson says he started warning fans about the rising water shortly after midnight last Friday. You know, you just try not to create a panic from the people that are here, but yet you got to get those people out to that, uh, you know, and, and we did that. You know, we made the call to 911 uh, Friday morning right away because we knew there was people that were, were trapped. The one that's Johnson right says now, people or? will have access to the dozens of campers still at Houston right. Speedway oh, beginning yeah. tomorrow. We'll tell you when Houston's plans to run the High yeah. Bank Nationals today on First at Four. In national news, President Joe Biden announced he will offer pardons to U.S. veterans who were convicted of crimes under a military law that bans same-sex relationships. Chief investigative correspondent Jim Axelrod has this story. As my sexual identity blossomed, I battled with how to live the covert double life that was required of LGBTQ military members at that time. Steve Morose was an Air Force officer in the late 1980s before the military found out he was gay and put him on trial. You were looking at 17 years in prison. I was, five years per sodomy charge and a year per conduct on becoming charge. He was sentenced to two years in a military prison. I thought my military life was over, but in that moment I thought my life was over. Last year when we spoke, he was still hoping for the day when the government would make things right. They have the ability to look back and say, People who are hanging under the weight of something that is no longer valid should be made whole. And today, word of that long-awaited redemption arrived. President Biden announced former service members who were convicted of crimes solely for being gay could apply for pardons, clearing their records, and potentially having VA benefits restored. It is for many a lifetime um, that they have been carrying this. Jocelyn Larkin is representing a group of LGBTQ veterans suing the Pentagon. It's a wonderful step forward, but there's so much more work to be done. But we welcome any recognition of the injustice that this group of people has been experiencing. For Steve Morose, it's recognition that is decades past due. What could be bigger than restoring someone's humanity? A sense of justice to somebody's life. Especially if you're that person, nothing. Steve Morose tells us he hasn't been contacted by anyone yet, but that he is ecstatic to hear the news. The pardons are not automatic. Veterans will have to apply to prove they are eligible. Once they receive that certificate of pardon, they can go to their military branch and apply to have their discharge characterization changed, which the White House says should unlock access to critical VA benefits down the road. The White House could not say how long that process would take or exactly how many service members this will affect. Jim Axelrod, CBS News, New York.